Low Magic Age is a game that's currently in early access and it offers a tactical turn-based party experience that will make any fan of Dungeons & Dragons feel quite at home. It features both adventure and arena modes. I haven't tried arena, just the adventure mode. The adventure mode is currently in beta, but to be honest, it feels very complete and bug-free. I haven't encountered a single bug in my 21 hours of playing. You can choose between four difficulties, including a permadeath roguelike setting. You can also tweak the character level cap and character leveling up speed. I'd recommend putting the leveling up speed to the maximum to save you time, so you can get access to necromancy and minions faster. You can also raise the minion cap, which I'd recommend doing. By default, spells will cost you spell materials. These are an expensive resource that is expended when casting spells and can only be replenished in cities. You can turn this off if you want, but in my playthroughs money hasn't been a concern, despite very heavy spellcasting. There's also other things you can tweak like robbery and assassination rates, wild monster density, world seed and some other stuff. You can have six people in your party and you can design these people yourself or select from pre-existing ones. For minions and necromancy, you should have a wizard or a cleric, and you can even get a preset for minions, which will also level your wizard or cleric with minion relevant feats and stuff like that. Both clerics and wizards can summon undead at level 5. Before level 5, only wizards will have minions. When you enter the game, you'll be shown a world map with your party on it, and you're free to move around and explore. As you travel, your party will consume supplies, and you'll occasionally have to visit towns to resupply. A bit like in Mountain Blade, you can make money by traveling around, working like a merchant, selling stuff from town to town, or you can go dungeon delving. There's also quests to complete, but it's all optional. When you enter a dungeon, you'll be presented with a chamber and corridors. Going along the corridors, you'll uncover either traps or treasure, but mostly traps. So that's the basics of the game covered. Now let's talk about the minions. Straight off the bat at the beginning, your summon the wizards will be able to summon elementals. These elementals come in different forms, a different form for each element, and they have different abilities too. For example, the wind elemental looks like a tornado, and he can perform a whirlwind attack, striking all enemies around it. The AI for these elementals is pretty good too. The elemental seems to always move into the best position where it can hit the most enemies with its special attack in one go. The elemental will persist for the entire battle until destroyed in combat. Overall I'm very happy with the elementals. They also scale well and remain useful as you level up. One strange thing about the elementals though is I haven't observed them being all that different aside from the air elemental. It moves very far in a turn, and it has its whirlwind attack that I mentioned before, but the others seem to be much the same, aside from their appearances, and don't seem to use any special abilities. I guess that their uniqueness isn't fully developed yet, and maybe in a later version of the game they'll get more special abilities. Although the stone and water elementals have the cleave ability, which means that when they kill an enemy, they'll also attack a nearby enemy as well in the same round. Once you reach level 5, you'll unlock the Animate Dead spell. And sadly, here's where things start to deteriorate a little bit. First off, Animate Dead requires corpses to work. This is reasonable and fine. However, to get corpses, you have to cast spells to kill enemies. But doing this is going to trigger the global cooldown effect, where casting any one spell will cause the cooldown on all spells, and you have to wait before casting a spell again. So what this means is, you are only able to get your undead either at the middle or at the end of the battle after the elemental has already done all the work. Or you can risk death by withholding spells until your warriors have slain enough enemies and you can raise some undead. Either option is pretty lackluster. But you also have to be sure that you don't mess it up. Animate dead will only raise dead within the highlighted squares near the caster. If you cast a spell with corpses too far away or misclick, then the aspect will have no effect. It will consume your spell materials and trigger the massive cooldown on all your other spells. This mistake has cost my highest level party on the roguelike setting, which was pretty frustrating. On the plus side, all corpses in the radius appear to be raised. 
This means you can get multiple minions in one quick burst, but only if you're lucky enough or skilled enough to have them all die in a convenient cluster. If you do manage to get your undead summoned successfully, then the skeletons are pretty good. They'll tear through your opponents most satisfyingly. My main problem with this animate dead spell is that it's very tricky and often risky to use. It's far safer to simply rely on elementals and not withhold the magic than to try and get undead summoned, which is a big shame. It'd probably be okay if the skeletons persisted beyond combat, but they don't, so oftentimes the skeletons arrive at the end of the battle and don't get much done. I'm pretty sad about this, but it may change in the future. I hope it's a bit different after they've finished tweaking everything for early access. My parties keep getting wiped out between level 5 and 10, so I haven't been able to see how the magic is at the higher levels yet. My recent party got wiped out at level 5 by a bunch of goblin mages. The goblin mages had higher initiative and threw grease down on my entire party, knocking almost everyone prone. Then they polymorphed the only elemental I was able to get out into a toad. Sometimes you just get really unlucky in this game. I'm going to revisit it again once it's out of early access and see what's improved. For now, I'm scoring this a 6.8 out of 10 for its minion mechanics. Minions aren't particularly plentiful because of the long cooldown between summons. Most of the time in a fight, your mage will only have one minion out at a time. The more mages in your party, the more minions you'll be able to get out. So while in theory, it should be possible to have a few minions out in the field, in practice, you tend to be dealing with only a couple, at best. Minions are moderately useful, sure. Actually, they're quite powerful, but they don't persist between battles, so their usefulness is hampered by this, in my opinion. There are situations where you end up in a battle, the enemy mages or whatever have higher initiative than your party, and throw debilitating spells down on you, which stop you from casting any minions because you've been sent insane and lost control of your character, or your character's knocked prone, or vaporized by a lightning bolt, or whatever. As I mentioned before, the undead minions are even more difficult to make use of because you have to refrain from casting spells so that the cooldown doesn't stop you from casting it when you need it. And you also need the corpses in advance. Minions are permanent during a battle, but they disappear afterwards. This is better than a minion that expires after a handful of turns, which would score very terribly with me, by the way. But it's still not ideal, especially for the undead ones which are a lot harder to get hold of. The casters in this game are typical D&D style casters, so they're weak when being directly attacked by an enemy, but they've got a lot of powerful damage spells at their disposal. They're pretty much glass cannons. The minion mechanics could use some work, but otherwise it's a very good game. I think anyone who likes D&D games like Neverwinter Nights will enjoy this, so will a lot of people who like roguelikes. If you're thinking of getting this for the minions or the necromancy, well, I'm not sure that this game can sell itself on those points alone. Also, if you hate RNG in games, this one might infuriate you. Your character's attacks are going to be missing a lot in combat and stuff like that. But as long as you don't play on roguelike difficulty like I did, you can just reload if everything turns out pear-shaped for you. Thanks for watching. I hope I've been able to inform you on whether this game's necromancy is worth playing or not. I've got more necromancy games and content coming your way.